All right, Ben, it's time to journey out there. Out oh, where? There. To the Outer Worlds. Oh. Cool. Uh, and who better to help us do that than Obsidian Entertainment? How are you guys doing? I'm just going to let you gentlemen introduce yourselves. Good. I'm Leonard Boerski. I'm the co-game director. Hi, I'm Natai Podar. I am a narrative designer on the Outer Worlds. Uh, so I guess I can infer from the fact that you guys are able to get on an airplane and go show this game off that things are calmed down kind of at the studio at this point. You're more or sure. less, you've more or less finished your journey? Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we'll say. Okay. <laughs> Sounds so confident. It's a good day today. Let's just go with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that's a good place to start. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of starting, we're just going to, uh, we're just going to dive in and kind of start a new character here. If you don't mind hitting the settings real fast, just to make sure we've got all the subtitles on. Um, yes. Great. Um, so yeah, we're just going to uh, start a new character here and I guess kind of let you guys drive and show off. Whatever you want. I'm playing this game on hard right now. Is that a mistake? No. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I, I died in the very first Marauder camp. Okay, well, well it, three times. Go ahead. That, well, that might be a mistake. But uh, <laughs> uh, hard is is generally tuned towards people who are like pretty comfortable with or uh, are used to like FPS mechanics. Um, normal or, and story are, are mostly for people who are just you know, dipping their toes, trying to figure things out, and yeah, might not it, be as familiar with the way things go. If you're a hardcore RPG player as well, hard is as a challenge. Yeah. I mean, it's a good challenge. They, they do a lot of damage and their aim is yeah. Yeah. quite accurate. Supernova uh, is our, you've beaten the game once. Oh, wow. Do it again. This time, uh, there's permadeath for companions. Oh, yeah. Um, you have to actually eat food and sleep and things like that. Yeah, you can only fast travel to your ship. Oh, huh, wow. Yes, that seems quite hardcore. <laughs> Let's maybe go with normal on this one just for the sake probably, of Probably, yeah, that's probably good. Good call. Um, cool. Um, so I guess uh, there are a ton of options from what I've seen in the character creator here. I'm just going to sort of let you guys uh, make the kind of character you would like us to see, I guess. Sure. Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your... Our goal with the uh, intro here was to introduce the player to the world, obviously, as well as the story. So trying to find a shorthand way to do that effectively without having somebody, you know, give you a long lecture on what the world is and what it's all about. The phrase, maximize your productivity, really speaks yeah. for itself, I think. Yeah. Um, this was billed as the perfect colony, and you would have been a colonist from Earth, uh, being encouraged uh, to come to Halcyon, you know, have full employment, live a, a whole and uh, forge well, a life. Exactly. Yeah. But that's that always that's always worked out. With, yeah, it like, goes, that always goes so well. Like the perfect ship, you know, Titanic. Long yeah, history exactly. of unsinkable. <laughs> the marketing for the Titanic really killed it. It's like you're really tempting fate at that point. Yeah. of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging oh. its bottom line disgraceful so phineas wells here is uh responsible for pulling you out of the hope you've been left to drift and uh the character creation process is actually him going through the motions of picking someone uh, yeah, so, I, I, that's a, I yeah. like that's a really cool conceit for like your right. uh, hundreds of thousands of potential like faces and stat combinations. Yeah, he's trying to find obviously the best person to help him with his quest. Also, it really kind of thematically fits the, the the universe to like literally pluck somebody off the shelf. Yep. <laughs> yeah, as if they are a commodity good, right? Oh, that's a really <laughs> that's a really great way of putting it. Yeah. Um, um, so he will he will comment a little bit on your choices if your stats are either below average or at the max he's generally got something to say yeah it, it took me a while to get through this just because there are so many pithy if you raise it to like high or very low he's got he's got a lot to yeah say I, I think uh, our intelligence should be low what do you think yeah. the let's go with some dumb i would dumb gladly dialogue. recommend playing through this game at a below average intelligence um what kind of fighting do you want to do today mikey <laughs> do you want to do some mm. some brawling or do you want to shoot a little bit of both we could bump strength and dexterity, maybe. A little bit. Um, so are these fixed 
Can these, these can never be changed, is that right? We do have a respec machine. Oh, so even these are included in the respec? Not yeah. for okay. attributes, I think. Oh, well, it's been uh, a long time since so I respect the yeah. character. <laughs> I take that back. Okay. You guys can edit that out, right? Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> um, let's see. How about... I went high on charm just because I like talking my way through situations, but... Uh, uh, what do you it's think? a low charm, high temperament. Okay. Some people are rough around the edges. You're serrated. <laughs> <laughs> You've got ice in your veins, and not just because you're frozen. Okay. Um, I like it. Yeah. I hope the trip back to my lab is as easygoing as you are. Uh, so something we try to do is we try to spread like um, uh, proficiencies and playstyles across multiple stats. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you want to be good at ranged combat, it's good to have dexterity and perception. Yeah, I noticed that, that that's a lot of these affected skills appear on at least a couple of different uh, attributes. Yeah, so it's very interesting when you're just trying to make a very specific type of character looking at the trade-offs you want to make. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, how about... Maybe bump perception a couple, maybe? Um, and maybe... Go with more decks. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Um... And then these are the categories that you can augment as you level, right? Yes. So, right. so these are more just kind of like starting, starting guidelines, and then you yeah, kind we of branch out. From we there. really wanted to. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of choices here, but we really wanted you to make choices along the way as well. Um, you know, we didn't want you to have to make every choice for your character's uh, d definition right up front. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is kind of a lot to have to decide right there at the beginning before you've really gotten a feel for what does what. Yeah. So that's nice. I see. Um, this, this, this branches from here. Well, the perks and the, and especially like the flaws we like to give, you know, we think that helps you really define your character sure. if you want to take yeah, them. As, as you go. It's usually helpful to think about these as categories rather than individual skills, because until you get to 50 in a skill, every point you put in a category is going to raise all the skills. So if you just, if you're like, well, I want to be dialogue and smashy, I guess, then we'll just go melee and dialogue and we'll just put points in everything automatically. And uh, since you level fairly quickly early in the game, you do have some room to just experiment. Hmm, how about... Uh, let's do tech because... Your skills would okay, great, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to maybe get the, the healing system opened up a little bit more. Ah. So we can talk about that stuff because I, I found, found that kind of unusual so far. Um, how about... Eh, let's go dialogue. It's fun to... It's fun to get some speech checks. Yeah, I, I think. For exploiting insecurities. <laughs> okay. Um, I went with the food one here. What do you think? Is that a good way to go? <laughs> it just depends what you want to, what kind of character you want to play. Yeah. I mean, these are these are flavor. Um, this is the aptitude test you took before you got on the colony ship. Right. Um, because it took you seventy years um, to get there, you're not actually going to be doing any of these jobs, but. We just thought it was a nice way to give you a bonus. Also, I really should have cleared this with you before we started, but are we in an embargo distortion field here? <laughs> that would be up to our, our... Jeremy shaking his head no. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna maybe pull back a little bit on my personal experience with the game. Um, I'll let you, yeah, let's just, let's go with the food for now. Ah, I see, a gourmand by trade. Uh, all right, uh, let's just, uh, I'll let you guys just kind of explore here. Do you want to just sort of cycle through some randomizations and maybe kind of fiddle with some dials a little bit here? That could be dangerous, but let's do it! <laughs> uh, so you guys are on... Oh, green. wow. <laughs> nice. Old oh, green beard. Oh, okay. I like where this is going. Right. Um, so you, you, guys are, you guys are on real? Right? Yes, on real yeah. has it been? Uh, has it been getting all the art, kind of RPG systems, character creator, all that stuff up and running uh, with that tech? Was, was that a fairly smooth process? Yes and no. It <laughs> um, luckily, we have Obsidian has some fantastic tools, the dialogue tools. Um, so, and we have a lot of experience making RPGs. So, yeah, we have like a suite of internal tools that we that that are just company wide that I think work pretty well with Unreal. Um, but those relate largely to narrative things like quest design, character or uh, dialogue design. Okay. Um, as for the tech side of whether or not we've had trouble with I gotta, like gotta grow the mutton chops. <laughs> yeah, I like. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm probably gonna speak to that. Um, it's been okay, I guess. 
Yeah, we were more on the I'm more on the art writing side. Yeah, okay. Um, that is one of the things, though, that with you know every generation, just gets it's harder and harder, more more steps to do to get art into the game because it looks you know the fidelity of it, the the textures, the materials, all that stuff, um, lighting. I mean, it all looks fantastic, but it just takes so much time to make the content. Sure, sure. How are you guys feeling about this eye color? I'm into it. It's a little upsetting to me. <laughs> we could go with it. I like. I, I'm a big fan of this makeup slider, including like bruises and bloody nose. Yeah, the bloody nose one was a very uh, that was nice touch. And a dirt slider. <laughs> Man, this guy has seen some stuff. <laughs> Let's see why he wanted. To I, know, I, I would have thought they would have cleaned you up before they put you in the uh, hibernation tomb. Uh, yeah, maybe a side effect of the chirostasis. So what do you, do you guys want to stick with the red eyes or? Uh, uh, sure, let's let's go. With it'll that. help with the speech. You know, he's good on speech. It'll kind right. of unsettle whoever yeah, he's yeah. talking so to. This is like plus one to intimidation, right? <laughs> uh, cool. I All like right. it. Yeah, let's go with it. You guys got a preferred character name? Hmm. How about Troy? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Troy. I have a feeling Halcyon isn't really ready for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Yes, out of all 100,000, this is exactly who I wanted. <laughs> this is the guy. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Well, you could read it one of two ways. Either he was ready to go and the alarms went off, so he made his <laughs> yeah, choice. Yes. Or he's just like, well, oh, this, this is, is what I got. got. <laughs> this is what I'm out of time. We're just going to go with this. We'll leave that up to the player to decide sure. which it was. <laughs> well, that, that's for you to define, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> was, was this person the right choice or not? Not likely bootlickers. That's <laughs> the best line in the game so far. Initiate yeah, that's. Uh, I found that sure. uh, in, a, in an old slang thing of yeah. like what 1800s. Sure. Uh, it's, uh, you might say it's kind of back in vogue now. <laughs> um. So here we have uh, Terra Two. Um, Terra Two is one of two terraformed planets in this system. The other one is Monarch, which was poorly terraformed and overrun with monsters. Uh, Terra 2, you'll find a lot of the, uh, the kind of like homesteads, uh, everyday worker towns here, because it's much more Earth-like. And uh, if you wanted to experience more alien environments, you'll probably end up in Monarch or, or something like that. Do you have a lot of choice in where you're going throughout the story, or is that very much dictated by what your objective is? Like, uh, is well, you have to go to specific places, but yeah. why you're going there can change dramatically. Okay. Like, you know, this guy rescued you and he wants to recruit you for his quest, but he's also very wanted by the board who, the Halcyon Holdings Corporate Board, um, they run the colony and uh, him, they're antagonistic towards him. And you can fairly early on in the game D decide to go on their path or their. No kidding, okay. Yeah, so, and that will send you through the main places you go to in a bit of a different order. Okay. And you can also jump back and forth. We let it, we leave it till very late in the game where you have to decide who you're really siding with. Yeah, we've gated off a few places to act like checkpoints for the progression of the story. So getting to Monarch is like an Act 2, Act 3 kind of thing. But on the way there, there are other uh, townships you can visit. There's uh, like an asteroid Scylla, there's the Groundbreaker. So you have some choices as to where you can go. Okay. And so you're going to be going to multiple places on the same place. So it's not like the necessarily like the Star Wars thing of like one biome, one planet kind of thing. Uh, we we wanted to do multiple biomes, but yeah. we kind of split them up by planet yeah. just because, you know, once again, the, the time it takes but to sure. make the content. Sure, sure. Um, and it's, it's more fun going to different places like, oh, no, this is a totally different planet. Yeah. <laughs> It's really cool to hear that you can just kind of subvert what appears to be the main storyline like super early on. Oh, I feel yeah. like I feel like it's been the trend in some bigger RPGs lately that like the story is the story and there's a lot of variability off to the side, but like the through line is pretty fixed. And we so. really wanted, I mean, in all the games that, that that I've made with Tim, we've tried to subvert that and let you kind of do it the way you want yeah, to. Yeah, that's that's cool. Um, I mean, I, I I like this guy from what I've seen of him. Like, it seems like he's got his heart in the right place, but like. Yeah. If you, if you suddenly feel like you want to go the other direction, it's nice that you can. He, and he, is, might, uh, he, he might have a couple secrets or two. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. He's kind of our default good guy path, you know, for lack of a better term. But the game is really designed for multiple playthroughs. If you want to get the full story of what's actually going on in the colony, we recommend you do, you side with Phineas, 
and in a second playthrough, maybe turn them in inside of the board, so you'll get both sides of the okay. same conflict. Okay, cool. Yeah, and the game is, is short enough to where when you get to the end, I, I, we're seeing a lot of people turning around and wanting immediately to play another character. Yeah. Well, again, hearing that there's that much variability actually makes that seem appealing, you know? It's, it's like some games it would just be like, okay, the, the pithy response you get to your dialogue choice is like the only real difference the second time, but hearing yeah. straight up changes in, in what faction you're aligned with sounds... Uh, yeah, we've really tried to focus on uh, reactivity branching options and, and having your choices actually matter. Uh, for example, the things that you do in Edgewater before you leave Edgewater could come back to haunt you towards the end of the game. Okay. And, you know, we really dug deep into the companions as well. You know, if you go to certain NPCs with different companions, they're going to interject differently. Um, some companions, like, we're not going to do it now in this playthrough, but Parvati is in Emerald Vale or in Edgewater. So if you go around Edgewater with her, it's a different experience. Okay. Um, on Monarch, you can pick up a big game hunter, Nyoka, who's been in previous videos we've done. Um, you know, if you walk around Monarch with her, people are always saying, oh, Nyoka, it's good to see you. And they talk a little bit about what's gone on in the past with them. So that kind of gives everything a different feel. And then the companions banter back and forth with each other as you're running around. So that's also another way of like exploring different uh, content. Is it, uh, I'm guessing it's kind of the same with companions as it is with the major story beats that like, are there some you can miss or like yeah. circumstances can, can be such that- uh, We've taken a few and we've others. kind of like put them in your face just to yeah. make sure you have some companions to run around sure. with. The and only way to really, I mean, unless you just walk by them and miss them completely, um, we haven't gated any of them. So if you if you run into them, you can recruit them. Okay. Easy now. You've been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. Is a tutorial for the medical inhaler there? Hey, you, come here. You've tried the best now. Now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. Hmm. How about. So we're gonna take mercy or take pity on this guy. If we got the check, yeah, we might as well do that's it. That's kind of <laughs> my, my my feeling is anytime you have a check that you're gonna pass, let's do it. Yeah, we really want to reward you for your choices and your skill choices and the different ways you're playing. We always want to make it feel like we're rewarding you for playing your character that you want to play, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to punishing you because you've you know diverted from our, what we think is the right way to play the game. Yeah, especially early on, we're kind of tutorializing reactivity and skill checks like for example Pelham here getting through his content you uh, you pick a dialogue choice um, and they all they're all based on uh, dialogue skills that you might have and like if you do a good job of showing that you know there's lots of interesting checks and stuff in the world it incentivizes another playthrough to play a different kind of character and see what else you open up yeah and it also lets people know that there are those paths right. because if you don't really kind of hammer home that it could have gone a different way then players will just think oh that was the way the game right. was laid out to be played right take them all out with a single shot not bad huh I just, I have to say that I really love, oh, let's, uh, why don't we intimidate? Yeah, we got those eyes. Yeah, you sound a lot like my lieutenant. Here, hope this gun serves you better than it did me. Here. I don't know, I still come across things in this game that make me laugh. All Spacer's choice weapons are now 30%. I was going to say, I, I, <laughs> I love the fact that this guy shot, literally shot himself through his side, but then the first thing he says to you is to try to deliver his company's sales pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Like he's always on the, he's like literally bleeding out here, but he's still trying to like tow the company line. I mean, that <laughs> you absolutely can kill him, and we do react. I, to I was, yeah. Like, can we? I, I'm just gonna say up front. Anytime I play a game with player choice, I play in the most like morally upstanding way possible. So sure. don't take this as any indication of my character. Uh, but let's ice this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mercifully. Like this from behind. Yeah, he's not. A, you oh, know, oh. You're just putting him out of his misery. He's hurt. Uh, you repaired him, though. <laughs> uh, well, something to bear in mind is because you have a low charm, 
um, Spacer Shows is going to hate you that much more. Oh, sure. So <laughs> oh, you, we probably that, shouldn't have killed him because uh, I wanted... You I wanted, get away with one. Well, no, I wanted to kill Mercer because I wanted Ernest to show up. You could. Oh, well, it'll be interesting if we show up in town and people aren't aren't too fond of us. <laughs> so, because nobody else was around, would that affect your faction rep? They would, that yeah. One? Okay. Oh, because presumably, like, they would find his body later or something Oh, Spacer's like Choice is always watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to touch back on what you guys were talking about earlier. The, um, you know, him delivering the slogans. I mean, you know, there's a lot of humor there, but it also is a way of, you know, showing how corporations run everything right. it, it down to the fact that that's what this guy is concerned about. You know, he's bleeding out and he's concerned that he's going to deliver the uh, slogan correctly. Right, right, right. Uh, what did that guy have on him? Was that a helmet? It looked like. You want to try throwing that on? It's like that's always the... That's always the trade-off of killing friendlies, right, is what you get out of it. He did have a helmet. <laughs> oh yeah, like yeah. that. Now you have a war trophy. <laughs> Pretty messed up to land on a planet and just murder the first person you see there, but oh. hey. So you guys have uh, time dilation for, for combat? Yeah, here? and uh, time dilation opens up a kind of like a call shot system. Uh -huh. While you're in time dilation, you can choose where you're gonna fire, like if you shoot at their head, it'll blind them, if you shoot at their leg, it'll cripple them. Okay. So there's like a tactical dimension to this too. That's a skill unlock to be able to, to do that. Okay, so you need to spec in a certain direction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, everybody gets the time dilation, but of course you can perk it so that time sure. dilation lasts longer, you can move faster during time dilation, or the called shots that, that Natai was referencing. Yeah. Uh, so that was a lock pick, right? Yeah. Um, is that, is that, the lock picks are purely just a function of having the Having the skill, the relevant and item, and, and the yeah. skill. Okay, so there's no uh, no mini game, no, no. no fiddly force feedback thing you have to go through. Okay, no, we didn't. Everything like that is 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 very can be very polarizing, and it's just time spent during development right. to get it right. Sure. So that's we just wanted to focus on specific things. I mean, if you don't like. A mini game that we put in there, but you put a bunch of points into lock picking or hacking, then it's kind of like gating you from playing the game sure, the way sure. you want to play. There nice. you go. <laughs> well done. Um, so is the um, is the kind of like location based damage on enemies already active, even if you haven't fully spec in that direction yet, or do you actually need a skill for like headshots to matter and stuff like that? You know, I don't remember. I think it's always active. Okay. But you get a, a huge bonus if you have the uh, the skill unlock. Oh no! Oh boy! All right, well, not the brightest marauders. <laughs> Good spacey Ice. metal Ice. sound on that swing. Mikey's way better at playing this uh, melee wow. than I ever am. That was um, quite a hit. Are there are there any um, drawbacks to blocking? Like, does it uh, hit the durability on the weapon more does, or anything yes. like that? Okay. Yeah. Um, you can also like boost blocking so that if you have a, a well timed block, it'll stagger the enemy if you okay. get an opening. Before you get yourself killed. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Gull on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. That's what do you guys think? Not impressed. <laughs> Honestly, after that last fight, it's true. <laughs> yeah, of course. Marauders. Bunch of addle brain derelicts. I could round them up all by myself. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. So you can uh, you can convince them to go down and do some fighting for you. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Let's. Uh, would there be any difference in the outcome between any of these different speech checks? In uh, terms of faction they rep or all like that, or? no, like the individual speech checks. Yeah. No, they all lead to them helping you uh, deal with the marauders. In this case, Mercer, like. Uh, the late Pelham back in the cave uh, is mostly for tutorialization. But yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, we d we didn't want to penalize people for picking one uh, dialogue skill over okay, another, or yeah. just putting points into dialogue and not, you know, yeah, 
and okay, giving yeah, you a that's... skill and not being able to get get past it. Obviously, this is tutorializer, sure, sure. but in the game, once a once a dialogue skill pops up, it's generally a success of some kind if you pick it. Okay. But a lot of times, you might need to get information um, or have talked to a previous person, gotten an item to be able to even open up that avenue. But we felt like if you're seeing the skill check and you've put your points into it, it's, it's kind of feels outcome. it feels bad if yeah. it does if it's not a positive okay, for using okay. it. Yeah, I was wondering if like later on, like say if you intimidated rather than persuaded, it would hit your faction rep or anything like that. But no, not okay. Yeah, okay. Well, let's intimidate them. Seriously? But those marauders will. Ugh. You know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. Here we go. I love that moment when you're locked in. Yeah, see, see if the marauders take him out a little bit. Oh, uh, sorry, go ahead. I just, as soon as they activate. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just, just like you're popped right. out of the conversation and they're immediately unholstering their weapon. Well, you know it's about fight. to pop off. Oh boy. Oh god. <laughs> hey, uh, oh no! The marauders proved too much oh of a gosh. challenge. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to, when you, uh, if you get rid of these two characters, a different character shows up after you talk to the ship oh, computer. No kidding. No kidding. Um, I really hope he's not automatically hostile, though. <laughs> oh, check your rep there, Michael. Michael. Why did I call you Michael? <laughs> I just. I, You've become official. I appreciate that our demo driver has uh, developed a mind of his own in terms of who should live, <laughs> who should live and die. Um, let's see. So, what are we under reputation here for that? Oh yeah, go over to reputation. Let's see what where we're at. Uh, space. Still neutral. Spacer's choice. Go no, down that's, that's groundbreaker. Go go all the way down to um, spacer's choice. Oh, neutral. Yeah. Okay. I just, want, I just wanted oh, to see no, how much negative. <laughs> yeah. So okay. you're you're still they're willing to deal with the fact that you just killed three of their employees. Okay. But <laughs> I guess it doesn't take much up. though. No. If you're, if you're already twenty two percent after killing a bunch of or a couple well, of. Keep in mind you have a low charm as well. Oh so. sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> So what should we? Uh, what do you guys want to put points into here? Um, let's see. What can we do? Um, so if you highlight the individual skills, it shows. Yeah, your kind oh, of cool. kind of your roadmap for what you're going to get as you. Yeah, twenty, um, forty, and sixty are are the critical ones. Yeah. Um, we've kept like the bigger. Uh, the kind of stuff that opens up gameplay at 20 so that people can feel free to experiment. Okay. Whereas towards 60 and 80, it's much more specialized. Okay. Um, what don't we have here? I would actually put something into leadership. Um, I think Inspiration 20 is not a bad pick. We're not, um, we're not picking up any companions uh, on this okay. playthrough, though. Fair enough. Um, how about... Uh, Go back up, maybe do... Where are we at on ranged? Okay, so we've got the location hit effects. Um, you have for handguns. Oh, yeah, if you, if yeah, you let's put... keep going on ranged. There you go. And maybe... Tech? Uh, let's keep going. Uh, how about a couple more dialogue? Okay. Uh, and then perks. you have a perk, right? Okay, cool. Uh, what do you guys like? I always like to put pump points into my time dilation because I love getting the the headshots and the different uh, the different uh, location hits and and being able to be very strategic. Um, I, I like to um, use that in combination with my companion abilities a lot. Okay, yeah, let's, let's go for that. Okay. So here we have the, uh, the ship, which was supposed to belong to the guy who was supposed to pick you up, who you, you crushed. Who you landed, <laughs> you landed on. on, yeah. Good old unreliable. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. <laughs> Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Hmm. Yeah, that one. 
suggestive for suggests initiated. Disengage the airlocks. Prepare. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. It's really a good nice touch. touch. Three, two, one. Oh, that's a Oh, wow. I didn't, okay. I didn't, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't expect there to be oh, yeah. speech options in the other direction on intelligence. If you have uh, low intelligence, we have filled the game with okay. dumb options. Okay. That's that, great. We like dumb around here. So. Yeah, I might just have to do that for my character. Accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. Hmm. Hawthorne's dead. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience. And A really good AI dialogue. Yes. <laughs> I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. <laughs> if I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Uh, second one. I understand. You are <laughs> You wandered outside the ship and experienced a permanent, life-changing encounter. The old you is dead. Welcome back, Captain Hawthorne. I extend felicitations and congratulations on your life-changing experience. Second one. I understand. You are going undercover <laughs> with an alias. It makes me wonder if the last guy was actually Hawthorne or if he just <laughs> yeah. eventually was like, you know what, uh, <laughs> sure, I'm Hawthorne. An endless succession of Alex Hawthorne. <laughs> <laughs> a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Mm. Yep. Astutely observed. However, the I'm dumb, but I'm a great engineer. <laughs> <laughs> we do allow that. You can be high science, low intelligence, yeah. and somehow make the right scientific conclusions for absolutely the wrong reasons. Just bang all the parts together it's, until it's they really, fit. It's really the Dr. Nick Riviera. <laughs> Yeah, the approach we took to the dumb dialogue, as opposed to some of the monosyllabic stuff we've done in the past, is um, you're just clueless. Well, especially in social, social situations, you don't quite know what's going on. Do you understand? Uh, let's do the, okay, sure. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. <laughs> All right. Um, so is this ship going to be kind of your home base throughout the game, more yes. or less? Yep. Um, yeah, and the, uh, the premise here is, well, the ship uh, was damaged while landing, so uh, picking up a power regulator will take us through Edgewater and Emerald Vale and kind of get us involved in the story that's happening there. Okay. Yeah, so we just picked up a damaged uh, shotgun. Let's see if we have enough uh, parts to fix it. I think we do. Good gun. Nice. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's good gun to have. And then noticing the uh, the damage is just a function of looking at like the durability rating, more or less. Is that right? Oh uh, yeah. Like once it falls to a certain percentage. Yeah, and you get a warning, of course. Okay. Um, you know, and if you pump up your engineering, you can repair stuff in the field. Um, you can also tinker at uh, workbenches, and okay. so you can, if you have find a favorite weapon, you uh, can just keep loading up the. Uh, I'll be with you, friend. I'm Ernie. From the ah. Department of Human Resources. <laughs> oh man. About to check on the guards. Now it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems to me they're all dead. Mind telling me what happened here? <laughs> I think we have to go with the speech check. Yeah. Accidentally brutally shot themselves, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. Second time this month. Guess I'd better get to cleaning up. Can't just leave company property scattered about, bleeding out on the dirt. Hmm. Sure. Eh, no can do, friend. That armor's Spacer's Choice property. Bodies, too. Living or otherwise. Company policy, you see. You don't want to amble on over to Edgewater at your earliest convenience. Constable's office might have work for someone with your, uh, let's just say, aggressive disposition. <laughs> Oh, and uh, be sure you can tell this guy's in HR. For for a can of <laughs> it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Uh, yeah, let's go check out town. So uh, that's uh, good old Ernie. Um, usually, if you hadn't killed our two upstanding guards there, 
they would have questioned you as you stepped out of the ship. Okay. Um, but since you did, we have Ernie as our, as our kind of uh, our fallback. He's our backup guy. Cool. Yeah, he's, he's, fun. He, I, <laughs> he's one of my favorite small side characters that most people don't even get to see. It's pretty good. So uh, while we do send you to Edgewater early on, you can just you can go in any direction you want. Okay. There's like uh, another camp you can visit. You can pick up side quests. You can go hunting for marauders. It, it starts to open up in a kind of contained way, since you don't have access to your ship here, but you do have access to pretty much everything that's in this area. Hello. Oof. <laughs> nice. Just went back to his home planet. Nice, uh, was that a nice use of the dodge move there? Can you dodge forward? Is that what happened? You can, yeah. Okay. So what's the plan? Are we talking with uh, Ludwig over by the landing pad? Uh, sure, yeah, let's check that out. Uh, there's a, I know there's a sprint. Is there anything governing the use of that, or can you just kind of sprint forever? You can sprint forever. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah, we played around with having a, you know, a meter, but it just became too cumbersome. Yeah, okay. Go to the right, Mikey. Let's talk to Ludwig in the... Yeah, you can, you know, go off the path and kind of do whatever you want. So is it kind of like you're free to explore this area as much as you want? But you're not, yeah, the you're entire not, Emerald Vale. But, but, you're, but you're not going to get off world unless you follow the right, kind of right. main story. It's kind of our way of like gating you, so you yeah. can't go completely off the rails, okay. but this whole area is open to you. Okay. He's a, is he in his house there? Yeah. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. The war! The coming apocalypse! Oh, man. <laughs> He's one of these guys, huh? <laughs> yes. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. Is this where we find out he has 55 gallon drums full of foodstuffs <laughs> buried behind his house? Uh, oh well, okay, we have to go with the dumb here. <laughs> Just you wait. Auto mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant, clattering about, firing at the birds, orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? Right now, the resistance is pretty much him and okay. maybe you. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's keep playing dumb. You can gird yourself in the armor of righteousness, soldier. From this moment on, you are a proud member of the resistance. They have sent a scout prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. The scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Die Robot is a very good quest. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see if we got any pointers. Mechanical's got a weak spot in their midsection. Okay. I think the technical term is um, the blue glowy square thing. Uh, all right, let's go kill that robot, I guess. Yeah, let's, we can do that before we go talk to Abernathy. Yeah, good call. Okay. Botched quests is a really good subcategory. Yeah. <laughs> the is live that... with the shame of it? Yep. Because if we let you play the game any way you want, then there's obviously going to be consequences. <laughs> In pretty much most quests, there are always going to be multiple ways to solve it. Um, I don't know if we have enough tech to solve this peacefully, but there is a way. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Can you talk to the oh, Hey, buddy. Repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable. Oh, man, we can't kill this robot. Why not? I ah, 
There you go. Oh, no. Dumb and generic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Information systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Initiating. It's like almost a Doctor Who thing of just like, and I'm good. I, I have the talent, but like, how I get it out is just like, oh my god, can you also shake this robot down? Oh, we have you to try. Let's do it. Peter's choice reminds all colonists that serving the Peter's <laughs> choice family is the highest possible reward. I have been. <sighs> Space for Choice has outfoxed us. <laughs> Robot is on some real dignity of work shit. <laughs> uh, all right, so I mean that that fulfilled the uh, yeah. objective, right? Yeah. Huh. Okay, that's the first step in a chain. Let's go talk to Abernathy, or unless you guys want to go turn that in. Mm, no, let's go turn it in real quick. I just I, okay. I feel like I'm going to need to see everything that that guy has to say at some point. <laughs> Um, Ludwig, I, man, he's standing by a landing pad where nobody ever lands. You know, it's got all that time. It's got on a hands. lot of time to think. Huh? Yeah. Um, it does. He wants you to do things that tie into the main story arc here later on. Spoiler. Bring us honor, soldier. Uh, yeah. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs. Pulled its optic cables out of that case? <laughs> Actually, don't tell me. Rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one, and the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer, a weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical heart. Okay. Cantina, lavatory, behind oh, wow. one of the right. toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. <laughs> okay. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place huh. the mechanical has need to end. That's, you know, he's thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> like we said, a lot of time to think. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll have to make a detour to the cantina. That's a good thing you don't clean that bathroom very well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I should wonder about the quality of those toilets. <laughs> um, is, is there ever, it's maybe a weird question, is there ever a case where, like, botching a quest would be a preferable way to go? Or is that always considered more of, like, a fail state? Uh, it's really up to you and how you want to play the game. Okay. Um, there, are, there are some quests where you have made a decision which isn't necessarily the psychopath decision, and as a result of that decision, this quest is no longer available to you. You've pretty much botched it. Okay. But you may have done it for roleplay reasons. I see. Okay. And it's not always, yeah, and it's, it's, sometimes it's because you've decided to do one thing instead of another. It's not necessarily that you did something to screw up that quest. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're going in, inside Edgewater right now. We'll pick that up. If we're going to the uh, community center, it's not going to be as helpful as, as when you go to the geothermal plant later, but... Yeah. Um, but the community center, so like what we've done with pretty much every quest, not just in Edgewater, but in the Emerald Vale region, is they all are connected to a central story that's being told about this area. Like even Ludwig's weird ramblings about auto mechanicals and their uprising. There's, I don't want to say there's a grain of truth to it, but it's tied into something else that's going on here. Oh, hello. <laughs> kind of hanging out, huh? Yeah, there is. See, when we first started concepting this area, me and the art director were just, the art director hates this term, so he's gonna kill me if he hears this, but I, I was always calling it diesel punk deadwood. Okay. <laughs> I just love the, the clunky machinery, the, the pipes everywhere. Yes, Mr. Thompson. A little bit of a frontier kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow, because I'm definitely not plagued. Mm. Surprise the spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Speed check. You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? <laughs> uh huh. You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. <laughs> you know how words sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait, no. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Listen, maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. 
Mm. Asher. You're right. I I'm plagued. I'm afflicted. I know it's hard to believe what with the fine and dashing figure I cut. But it's all true. Hey, you're hale and healthy and possibly for hire, ain't ya? Uh, do a good turn for an expiring old man. Uh, yeah. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in. Nab Seems like you guys really don't go out of your way to lead people to like, hey, there's a side quest here, like check out this glowing exclamation mark. Like, is, is, yeah, that, is, that, is that by design? Like you really want people to have to kind of dig yeah. to find some of the stuff? Uh, yeah, and one of the things we did, and this it was even more difficult for us to balance, was to not have um, NPCs immediately just go, hey, here, here's a quest for you. You know, yeah, um, we wanted you to layers deep. Yeah, yeah. talk to them. And, you know, there's a lot of humor in here. But, you know, if you kind of read between the lines, it's a it's a really good way for us to kind of explore what the world is without just giving lore dumps through journals or whatnot. We also wanted to encourage the player to talk to NPCs whenever they want to, because even if an NPC doesn't necessarily have a quest, they usually have some insight about the world. They might have some funny dialogue. They will engage you like pretty much all of them that have any kind of dialogue. Oh, who's this? Excuse me. I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. Oof. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. Mm -mm. Oh. oh no! Oh. Uh, yeah, that, that's... I'm doing right by the town, I'll tell you that much. You bring me that medicine, and I'll see that it goes to the right people. Huh, okay. That's all I can ask of you. Alright, so pretty, uh... Pretty overt decision to make. Um, should we go... Oh, there is, um... There are mechanicals in that, uh... Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong <laughs> I was no. thinking about the geothermal plant. No, and the geothermal plant, yeah. Yeah, because I was but, wondering whether uh, we should go back to Ludwig and get, get the uh, the modification. Uh, I'll, let you, yeah, I'll let you guys decide. You obviously know the game. It's better than anybody. I think we're good doing the um, uh, the uh, community, community center. center. Yeah, yeah let's the geothermal plant is a bit of a song and dance to get to. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just wondering whether we should go to Ludwig and have him uh, give you the upgrade or not. Yeah, I think um, Daniel Alpert, our art director, came up with the idea of using, these are posters or ads you see around the world, and he used all of them for loading screens, which I thought was really cool. And we also have some board propaganda, um, which is supposedly taken from newspapers that kind of report on choices you've made throughout the game on the main Ooh, story arc. Interesting. But they're always from the board's point of view, so if you did something that's helping the uh, anti-board forces, it's, it's always a bad thing. Uh, go, let's go to the uh, community center. How much does uh, time of day matter? Like, can you sleep in advance time? Like, does that affect, like, day versus night? Does that affect, like, what's available to you? Or? No, we were going to play around with that a lot more with, in terms of creatures and, and things like that. But um, we were trying to just keep keep focused on, on the main stuff that we really wanted the player to do. Um, yeah. If we had a smaller, a smaller, a smaller uh, budget and a shorter time frame than a lot of people would have with with games of this type, so we had to make some choices like that where we're going to put our energy. Yeah, definitely. Um, time of day and stuff like that might matter if you're playing on Supernova. You need to keep track of how much sleep you've got, whether you've eaten, but generally it doesn't matter. Uh, so which uh, quest is this that we're going after? I believe we are trying to find that medicine for Abernathy. Okay. Uh, so we're going through the region of Emerald Vale, uh, which used to be a big bustling town, which uh, a few decades ago just kind of fell apart. Uh, whoever, the people who are left behind live in the town of Edgewater, and uh, the surrounding area is pretty much just marauders. Okay. It's like one last marauder now. Oh, 
I liked that shooting the barrel over there to distract him. Oh wow! Huh? Okay, that's a that's a cool combo. Like trip him up with the leg shot and then <laughs> yeah. go for the head once there. That's cool. <laughs> Come here. Nice. Um, I think I've seen a couple of mods or augments here and there for for gear. Are those reusable, or is it like when uh, you, when you mod time. something? Is it? Uh, it's they're not reusable okay. individually, but um, if you specialize in tech, you should be able to um, get a lot of them pretty quickly. Okay. Like th there are tech perks, which kind of populate any loot tables that you have when okay. you open up containers with like you will just find more mods or you will make mods every time you break down another weapon. I see. Okay, so you. Uh don't need there we go. Cool. We've unlocked the uh, location hits. Nice. Okay. And yeah. combat dialogue abilities. I don't know if you guys were familiar with that. No. I mean, you should put on some armor before we go in there. Um, yeah. The uh, so there's the three different combat skills have different effects on your enemies if you unlock it. Um, you have a chance of um, if you have persuade, you have a chance of um, having humans cower. Huh. Um, lying has to do with um, auto mechanicals, as we call them, and intimidated for creatures. So you'll have a so it's a way we have of like um, are your dialogue skills having an effect on your combat okay. without you having to do anything they're all passive. Yeah, we didn't cool. want you to feel like you were completely useless in combat if you didn't specialize in combat. There should always be some path through combat so you aren't you don't feel like you have to go right. sixty in guns every single time. I like that. Ooh, it has a big gun. Do you think it's possible to spec enough in, like, say, ranged combat that you could not even rely on the time dilation and just play this kind of as a Absolutely. first person shooter? Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I personally like to get really powerful sniper rifles and use the uh, headshots. There's a perk that um, if you successfully headshot someone and kill them, there's a radius that goes out from their head of, of AOE damage to their, um, their allies. Nice. Yeah, time dilation is not really something that we make you use or even expect you to. Uh, for example, uh, the combat perks related to uh, guns and melee, they're really intended to just make you better at that one thing. But the interesting part comes in when you start combining different different abilities, different skills, okay. and using them in different ways. And of course, TTD is one of the reasons we have it there is for people who you know, want to slow down the combat right. and aren't as much into Twitch stuff. But there's a lot of ways to use TTD effectively, even if you are somebody who likes to play fast-paced shooters. Right? Yeah, um, the rate at which the world slows down around you relative to your speed is, is not even. So you can actually use tactical time dilation if it's slow enough to like get through somebody's perception meter a little bit faster if you're sneaking. Um, oh, so like if you have TTD on and you're sneaking past someone, they will detect you slower than they usually would. Oh wow, okay, oh. that's cool. I just want to mention that I really like that we're in a reality where the bad guys really did take over the community center. Oh yeah, they did. <laughs> like uh, the, the plucky, plucky teens failed to, <laughs> failed to win the dance off. Well, the, <laughs> I should probably tell them this because we've never talked about this. It's just hilarious, or I thought it was hilarious. Um, in in Halcyon, um, sexuality really doesn't matter. They're not really um, hung up on it. Um, this was originally supposed to be the community center and brothel, so <laughs> okay. But we just we weren't able to to work that in there. It was just too too large of a leap for us to kind of convey that to the player. Right, it's one of those things where it's like if you see it, it's funny, and then you start thinking about it and without the proper you know flavor around it, it might seem a little exactly. So we're just like, well, that's that's kind of you know we're not going to really explore that as much in this area. <laughs> right. So this uh, is intended to be kind of the stealth tutorial area. Okay. Uh, it's designed in such a way that you can make use of line of sight. But you know, if you play a smashy guy, you can go and his guns blazing. You'll be outnumbered, but you could probably do it. And of course, you know, if you've gotten your first companion in town, which is if you're following the main story arc, you're offered your first companion. 
Um, oh, she so you, she you can be very helpful in here as oh, well. So you could have a buddy here, okay? Yeah. Um, We've kind of gone off the rails uh, because we ignored Edgewater completely. Sure. Uh, but I, I guess like the most common playthrough is you've picked up a companion, you've got a load of quests, and this whole area becomes more manageable that way. Can you only have one companion with you active at a time? Uh, two. Two, okay. I saw that. Er, the implication was that leadership perk, uh, or the leadership stat affects like companion uh, Absolutely. activity. Uh, if you want to be the kind of player who just wants to depend on their companions and you just pump leadership up to maximum, they become really powerful. Oh, they interesting. They kind of like go in and mow things down for you. You just kind of, you're just the guy telling them what to do. They yeah. also have their own skills and their skills boost your skills. So like if you're not great at dialogue, but you have a very high leadership, you can take companions who are great at dialogue and like a portion of their dialogue skill goes to you. So it lets you play a bit of a generalist that way. Okay. And you could of course perk that, the, your companions get perks and each one of them has a perk that gives you more of their skill effect when you take them with you. Okay. Um, so it's interesting, you know, when you're going to specific areas, you might choose different companions if that's the way you're playing. Better heal yourself. Oh, health, health. <laughs> Um, you know, but this is this nice. also shows how we don't force you to stay on the main story yeah, yeah, at all. Yeah, it does. It, I was gonna say it's kind of illustrative of the flexibility. Yeah, Tim, the other co-game director, um, he recently played uh, a playthrough where his goal was to do everything exactly out of order because he, of course, knows how you do this. I think this was his 14th or 15th playthrough. Huh, wow. So he did everything specifically in the wrong way just, just to, to just to make sure it wasn't huh, gonna break. That's cool. Um, so if you have enough lockpick, you can get through here. If you do not, you have to uh, find a key, which you can either print if you have enough hack, or you can find it on one of the marauders on the second floor if okay. you kill them. What's your... Mm. Oh, no, you do not have enough hack there. Is the game relatively flexible once, once it opens up and you're able to start going to other planets and stuff? Or are you fairly free to come back to old locations and keep Yeah, keep yeah I don't okay. think we actually gate you out of a location. Yeah, I don't think we do. There we go. Huh. That was a guy. Ha. Ah. That's the stuff. Abernathy's anthracillin. So then the choice is, who do you give it to? Mm. What do you think, Ben? I mean, Abernathy is the kind of guy seemingly to, to... He's got a good work ethic. He's willing to go in even with the plague. Yeah. And I feel like that'd be valuable to the ecosystem. He did look a little green around the gills to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he might be genuine. And, you know, maybe he just wants to, you know, take these drugs for fun. I don't... I, you know, it's, <laughs> it seems like a rough place to be. I'm not going to judge. Also, that lady as a representative of the management, I feel like, is immediately to be distrusted. Also an actuary. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but ironically, if you do have the persuade skill and talk to her, she doesn't want to turn it in either. She wants to give it to other people who are, you know, sure. younger and, oh, that's true. and more. That's true. She didn't say what she's going to do with it yet. Yeah. Hmm. So we try to have a lot of different layers, you know, depending on what kind of playthrough you're going, you're uh, doing. Um, that can reveal different aspects of the story, different aspects of people's motivations. Yeah, I, like, just for my part, I had basically never play a game more than once, mm -hmm. largely just due to time constraints, but I'm, I'm seeing and hearing enough here that I really could see the value. There is also a third option with what you can do with your medicine, and we actually never point that out to you, but oh. that is for players to kind of discover. Okay. Like if you poke around, I've you'll find some. something else. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So you can go talk to uh, Reyes. Trying to resist just asking what that is. <laughs> oh, Mikey's gonna go. Mikey's gonna go talk to the uh, the constable, and okay. Abernathy hints at it. Okay. Yeah, I, I did a leadership playthrough where I the first thing I did was put max out all my leadership skills, um, or at least that was one of the things I was concentrating on. And there was a period of time where I was just sending them ahead of me into even the toughest situations. <laughs> I sent my two companions ahead and they would just wipe up everything 
while I just hang back and collected all the loot. Yeah, sit back, read a book. Yeah. Do they do they have their own uh, like attributes and, and perks and so forth, or is it all they tied have, to your leadership skill? Uh, to the they're they're they get better if you're, you know, you're a more inspiring leader. Basically, is the, is the lore behind that? Okay. Three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. So she so she's the other person we could turn it into, okay. um, but. If you give it to her, it's probably going to get lost in the bureaucratic. Oh, of course, yeah. so, let's maybe, let's maybe But it would. Work. But if you have a shaky reputation in Emerald Vale, that might be a way you want to. Uh, oh, intro. Okay. Um, let's give it to yeah, Abernathy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's look for work with her real fast. Does, does she have any? Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Mm. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. <laughs> I'll dust off the old fingerprint roll it. Okay then. Uh, all right, yeah, let's maybe go pay old Abernathy a visit. I like the implication there that they haven't needed the fingerprint thing for a while because they're just like, yeah. <laughs> oh, was that? Uh, That's Esther. So. Uh, can you talk to her real fast before we not necessarily give it to her, but. I've got some time. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. I was, I was almost hoping we could dangle it in front of her and see what information we could get. Is that in there? Is that possible? That's not there? an option. Yeah, not okay. Unless you had right. Well, I don't think I trust her, so... Yeah, she didn't give us enough to work with, but uh, old Abernathy here. Yeah. Oh, sweet mercy. So you're wearing a Marauder's outfit right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I, wow, I didn't expect, like, armor to play into the dialogue options. You nearest killed me with fright. At least I know I ain't hallucinating. Is this just like a design nightmare to create this endless matrix of like what you're wearing and what the eight different skills are? Uh, we like get around the nightmare by kind of picking our moments. Okay. So we, we okay. know that at this point, players are likely to be on this quest and they are likely to gear up. And the most common gear you found at this point is Marauder gear. Okay. So we're like, all right, players okay. are likely to be wearing that kind there of stuff. There are moments where it becomes somewhat nightmarish when you're trying to figure all this out. But to me, it's really fun to do. Sure. I just envision a lot of like like uh, messy whiteboards full yeah, of Yeah, like string full, full going lines from and string them. pointing to different variables. Again, our, our dialogue tool is fantastic. Yeah. It's a flow okay. chart. It's a okay. visual flow chart, so you can kind of really see That's how cool. I mean, those are it. some of the best moments in games like this of like just little changes manifesting based on things you never would have expected like that. That's that's cool. Let's see it. Don't keep us waiting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Medical condition? Is my plague getting worse or something? I like that's another cool one where I would not have expected medical to be a, a, a staff that contributes to speech checks. Sometimes but, it does, but, but here, primarily here. it's dialogue. Every right. now and then we'll drop in other skills. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's let him have it. Sweet life given nostrum. The first hit's always the best. Scratch together all the bits I had around the domicile. It ain't as much as you deserve, but it's all I got. Okay. So are you gonna are you gonna shake extort him, him or shake him down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think we probably. He's high. That was the perfect <laughs> chance. <laughs> You'd really sprat me out for what? A couple of extra bits? Wow. Here, take it then. He, he pays pretty well, right? Okay. He's holding out on us. <laughs> huh. I guess we can go to turn in the. Uh, so, uh, according to Spacer's Choice Logic, you've made up for half of a guard that you've killed? <laughs> yeah, a lieutenant. You literally shot a lieutenant dead, but... Uh, Maybe it's Pelham. Got drugs. Yeah, it, it erased Pelham from, from your <laughs> kill, record. Kill two employees. Oh, yeah. sorry, three employees. <laughs> yeah, let's go back Heal to... Heal another one. What's the difference? Um, Ludwig, and he can... Uh, okay, yeah, let's... We can uh, turn in the thing you found yeah, in the latrine. Let's make, let's make Ludwig our final stop on this, uh, on this tour. Um... This is cool. Like I feel like we've dug into a lot of meat here in terms of quests and so forth, and we haven't really even like touched the main quest. Oh, go yet, out right? the other door. Go go back into the yeah. Yeah, we've really tried to design it in a way. I think like your impulse of saying, "Hey, what'll happen if I go do this?" or "Can I try it this way?" is is as much as possible. We've something we've tried to design around. Right. Like I don't. I don't think we really haven't done a step of the nope. main, main objective. Oh, no. at you all. haven't talked to the main the main guy right. like at all. Yeah, that's cool. I, lo I would a, love that sign in my house. Uh, <laughs> ah, sissy pigs. Uh, miracle of science. Oh god, I remember that term from E3. I was very upset by it then, and it's not gotten any better. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. 
It's the look, the loving look in her yeah. eyes. <laughs> some of these are, some of these are. I don't know if you guys have a company store, but some prints of some of this stuff would be pretty good. We should look into that, Mikey. <laughs> Bring us honor, soldier. Okay. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. Designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the Hand of the Law. You ever want to see a mechanical flailing around like a grounded fish? You stick a couple thousand bolts in its guts. With compliments from old Ludwig. Mm. So what's next? Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. Oh boy. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board given jurisdiction. So he's kind of nudging you back to the main quest here. Oh yeah, because that's, that's oh, the guy you have to talk to anyway. I, one of my favorite lines of his is, or, is <laughs> if you've gotten the passcode from uh, Reed already, he's just like, wow, he'd never give it to me because of <laughs> What's, what's the term he uses? Uh, gross incompetence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Secu gross security related incompetence, I believe it was. Sure. Uh, yeah. You got pluck, kid. But no. Can't risk having you go native. I need God. you to get us the wow. brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. There's the rub. If a mechanical breaks oh. down, the logic module fries. So you can't rip one out of its corpse. You're going to have to find an intact model somehow. Uh, yeah, seems simple. If you die horribly, <laughs> I will pour out a can of zero G to your memory. Oh, thanks. Uh, all right, well... So he ended up giving you the injury customizing unit. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of our, like, in-character way of saying, this is a mod, which you can now mod onto your shotgun. Ah. It's got a, uh, a convenient workbench okay. right in this little domicile Oh, there. you want to slap that on real quick? Very effective against mechanicals. Sure. Now, kind of like any any weapon mod go on any weapon, or is it like there they are, are limited? Specific? Like there's uh, well, not shotgun specific. There's like gun specific, okay. uh, melee specific, armor specific. Okay, but like you could put this mod on a, a pistol. Yeah, or a, or the a shotgun. different the different guns or different weapons in general, and even armors have different mod slots. Some okay. some brands have more mod slots than others. Okay, cool. So we can see that the damage has changed to electrical, which means this should just completely mow through. Oh wow! Uh, any yeah, that's, that's a nice weapon to have. Um, you know, and when you like you were asking before you can't take off the mods but you can replace them but what the one you replace is just gone sure but it's not locked into place you can keep modifying the same okay. weapons over and over speaking of customizing can we take a look at the uh, inhaler stuff real quick oh yeah um. right so uh, as you can see um, you've got 12 total so uh, uh, adreno is basically your default I'm taking this as kind of a health potion. Mm -hmm. um, if you take more slots in, I believe it's medical, um, you get more slots open in your inhaler. Right. So you can slap in like food, you can throw in a drug if you want. And every consumable has some kind of statistical benefit for you. Like it'll improve your base health, it'll improve your regeneration, it might make you more charismatic. Uh, so one of the benefits to having a higher medical skill is that every time you just take a hit of the inhaler, I guess, you get your health back, plus a bunch of additional bonuses. Or, or could you even take the, the syringe, the Adreno out, and just put other... I've never tried that. Does can, that... Can, you, can you replace that? I'm like, you try that. That's a really good question. I'm not sure we let you. Okay, it looks like... No, the, so it's like the that... Heel, so the heel is fixed, but yes. you, yeah, you but can they, add other effects. They stack and they'll just keep grabbing the same okay. thing out of your inventory. Yeah. So if you if you if there's one thing you really love, you can just yeah. buy it up everywhere that's, and that's, always that's have it. That's an interesting it. system to be able to get that hit of like health and other stuff at the same time. Yeah, I mean, there's things that, you know, change your body attributes, you know, mind attributes. Of course, if you take too much of uh, a drug, you'll always run afoul of the, um, the flaw addiction. Okay. Uh, so... 
It's just it's a way of the game tracking what you're doing and then reacting to it either by providing you a flaw. Is that largely how you come by the flaws? Just by things that you yeah. Like so you don't actually start with a flaw, but right. flaws happen as you play the game. The okay. game is kind of detecting what you're doing and then presenting you opportunities to like take an extra perk point in exchange for a flaw. Interesting. Okay. And we let you, of course, uh, opt in or out of that system. Okay. Uh, all right. So as our final act, because Troy here is a throwaway character, I know. Uh, I feel I like I Ludwig. Ludwig doesn't have long to live. Is was, that what I'm hearing? I was going to say. I know he's not an auto mechanical, but what do you say we give this thing a try? Oh boy. Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't know. I get the feeling. Let's, let's see what your space choice for reputation is now. I get the feeling this guy is only worth like. Um, I fl <laughs> your reputation is kill on sight. It looks like there you now have a botched quest on you. I was gonna uh, say I thought this guy was only worth like half a pelham or something. But yeah. What was our reputation? Uh, I believe these kids. They're off put. They're off put. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so oh, oh, it was because they were close enough when he shot them that they're they're coming to help out because he's got. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh boy. All right. But, you know, if you don't flee and you keep fighting oh these people, God. you will end up uh, probably kill on sight. Wow. Ah, uh, corporate technician. Uh, could, you, could you generally assume that, like, any enemy that has a weapon is going to drop that weapon if you kill them? Or? No, it's not a what you see is what okay, you get. So you're not necessarily going to get this guy's crazy... No, weapon. see, he didn't have it. I see. Wow. Huh. Okay, well, thanks Ludwig. For yeah. everything. <laughs> I didn't think the world was ready for Troy, and I, I have been yeah. vindicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you say you botched a quest off of that action? Mm -hmm. Can we take a look at that real fast? Oh, hey, yeah. Wow. Can't very well turn in the quest if he's dead. I guess not. <laughs> that checked and, out. Uh, the uh, quest text has updated to let you know that Ludwig is out of commission permanently, and yeah, the machines have won. Certainly not in any condition mm. <laughs> to continue his crusade. Cool. Uh, well, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Oh, well, thanks uh, for having this, us. This has yeah. been a really good deep dive for me into, again, like just the amount of variability that there is yeah. here. Like, it's hard to know your first time through what you missed because you didn't see it, right? right. right. Yeah. Like, hearing that there's all these different possibilities is super exciting. So Yeah, that's really been our goal, is yeah. we want you to play it multiple times. We want you to, as you play it, think, hey, for my next playthrough, I kind of want to try this and see yeah. how it goes. Cool. There's that aspect to it, and there's, like I've said before, it's really about trying to support any type of character the player wants to play yeah. and, and having the options to do so. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, from what I'm seeing here, that seems to bear out for sure. Uh, so, cool, you guys are more or less done, it sounds like, at this point. We better be at the show <laughs> next week. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so on, on that note, remind us of the date and platform. October 25th, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you guys again for stopping by. Thank Great. You. Thank you guys for having us.